Hey guys, Dave Mad Max X here. Um, I want to uh, say a few words before this next episode of uh, Ask the Doc. So, number one, uh, Dr. Ryan and I wanted to thank you for watching the show, make it so popular. It's really taken off, and uh, we really appreciate your feedback and your questions. And for most part, they are very, very que good questions. But what I want to say is a few things. Number one, uh, before you submit your question, please review all the existing show already because a lot of material have been covered and a lot of time people are sending me questions that have been answered already so I cannot ask the same questions over and over to the doc so make sure to review the previous shows before you submit the questions that's very important also um, usually when I shoot with Dr. Ren it's maybe once every three or four weeks so he's not uh, he, he has he's really busy so I don't have access to him on a weekly basis like I do with, with Eric Broser or, or some other people so uh, please be patient when you submit a question. Uh, usually what we do is we shoot for about an hour, an hour and 15 minutes. We can answer about 10 to 12 questions at a time. And usually what I'll do is I'll I'll do each show about two to three questions, which lasts about 15 to 20 minutes. So it might take a while before your question is answered and actually uh, put on the channel. So uh, don't uh, don't despair if it's a good question. Usually uh, I will I will uh, I will ask the doctor. And also, um, I always answer everybody who sends me an email concerning your questions. But please uh, uh, be patient, and uh, we will answer your question in due time. And that's it. Thanks for watching the show, guys. Okay. Dave, thank you for putting this series together. It's very informative. Please ask Dr. Ron, uh, uh, Dr. Ren, during cycle, how can we manage keeping the red blood count, RBC, and high blood, uh, uh, high blood pressure within normal range? Supposedly, some bodybuilders use uh, UG Cialis to control high blood pressure, and for RBC, you can donate blood. Thank you. Yeah, that's easy. Uh, a lot of times, you can uh, see an elevation in red blood cell count hemoglobin hematocrit, just using, uh, usually, usually it has to be above a replacement therapy dose um, on its own. But oftentimes I see an elevation because someone will have sleep apnea, mm. which is then, the effect is then leveraged by the use of testosterone. Um, when you're sleeping, you can drop into oxygen debt more so than you can running on the treadmill fully awake. And you're getting the training effect, which is telling your body, hey, you know, I'm not getting enough oxygen, create some oxygen carriers, you know, hemoglobin specifically on red blood cells. So you can see an elevation of that. And the way you protect yourself against that is first of all, find out, make sure you don't have sleep apnea. Mm -hmm. uh, typically, you, you know, don't use more than, um, you know, uh, a, a replacement dose. And then if you do find that you have an issue with it, donate a pint of blood. Do yourself a favor, do someone else a favor. And I joke with patients, you know, bring your cell phone, call your mom and tell her what a good boy you are, helping out other people and, and make her happy too. Um, let's see, so hemoglobin, hematocrit, and what was the other one? Yeah, high blood pressure. And, and Cialis. Well, yeah, Cialis. that one is, what is suspect. <laughs> No, no, it's, it's a good one, and, okay. and it's just that the, the diagnosis of hypertension is what's suspect is what I'm getting at, because um, Cialis is going to block the reabsorption, you know, it's a PDE5 inhibitor like Viagra and Levitra, of nitric oxide, and nitric oxide relaxes a smooth muscle in the vasculature, so you can see by doing that, you can effectively lower your blood pressure, and a lot of people who use the, the, the PD 5 inhibitors will, will notice an increase in heart rate because you know you're you're dilating the blood vessels blood pressure drops and your heart compensates so it's effective at doing that but that's not dealing with pathological hypertension a renal artery stenosis or coronary artery disease that's something that is again pathologic and that's that's true hypertension you may be dealing with when you're when you're finding that cialis lowers your blood pressure um, you know, like magnesium does. Magnesium is a smooth muscle relaxant as well. Uh, it, it may be because of tension, in other words, not hypertension. Boy, I'm messing up my, my words here, but it might be because of what you've created up here, not thickening of the arteries. The pipes haven't grown, grown stiff or closed off, 
It's just because, well, your type A personality, you woke up and, hey, you're getting into action. So, uh, again, going back to what I first said, I, I would be suspicious of the diagnosis of hypertension if Cialis is relieving the problem, okay, for this yeah. gentleman. Um, the best way to do that is to buy a, an at-home uh, blood pressure monitor mm -hmm. and test it when you first wake up and periodically during the day and before you go to bed and see, okay, do I really have hypertension or am I just wound up because I'm maybe taking too much testosterone or steroid and you know some steroids tend to make you I mean there aren't a whole lot but um, you know there's some with profiles like halitestin mm -hmm. that are gonna make you a little bit more aggressive mm -hmm. and might bump up the blood pressure you know, it's a common misconception to think that um, if your blood pressure goes to whatever 190 over 110 during the day that you have hypertension what do you think happens when you're doing heavy squats? Right. Blood pressure's going through the roof. Yeah. It's chronic high blood pressure that's the problem. And, you know, going back to something that's pathological. So maybe he's just tightly wound. <laughs> you know, he doesn't have anything pathological. And when you relax the smooth muscle of the vasculature, the blood pressure goes down. So... I think it's a question that comes back fairly often, the blood pressure with, with volume loaders, though. What, I mean, if it's something chronic, if you have all the time, what, what's the best, uh, what's your best answer to that as far as blood pressure? I mean, Find uh, out why it's chronically high. Yeah. Okay. Is it because um, you've got something going on? You know, there, there is research showing that uh, there's a mild elevation in, um, in, um, the uh, the uh, antidiuretic hormone uh, that might make you hold a little bit more fluid in the vessels and um, you know therefore okay you, again you know it's not pathologic though it's because you're using too much testosterone or steroids mm -hmm. but if you're chronically using too much testosterone or steroids then you might be creating some pathology not might mm -hmm. definitely yeah. The whole issue, I mean, why do we care about hypertension? I might be giving you too much and you can edit this out if you want, but why do we even care? If it's super, super high, we care because you might blow out a vessel in your vein right. and you're done. Okay. Yeah. But you're usually talking about levels, you know, where the systolic is close to 200 or above. Okay. And again, I don't want to throw out any numbers that give people cause to not take their blood pressure medicine, but I typically don't see it uh, a problem until it's gone above 200, you know, like, you know, 230, and the guy, unfortunately, you know, blows a, a vessel. I say, really? God, could be because when you go to the doctor just to run a test, if it's slightly elevated, I have I've gone before, if it's slightly over the norm, they're, oh, my God, we're going to admit you right away. Well, but, but that, again, <laughs> we're talking about the difference between chronic and acute. Yeah. Because I'm sure when you're doing heavy squats, your blood pressure is going up, you know, I, I know the way you work out, over 200, you're systolic. But if someone has chronically high blood pressure like that, you're constantly putting pressure on the walls. Mm -hmm. You're not giving them a chance. It's like overtraining. Right. You're not giving them a chance to, to rest. repair, right. rest. Yeah. And so you create a long-term problem. And that's not just the, the blood vessels. You know, you're also dealing with left ventricular hypertrophy, the, the heart muscles getting too thick, and that can lead to congestive heart failure and, mm -hmm. and other problems. Think of it as like, um, in some ways, like Dizzy Gillespie's cheeks, you know, uh, they're, they're, they're under pressure and stretched out all the time. They don't necessarily work as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when he blows that horn, when he first started blowing it, they, they pushed out a little bit, but you know, then as he got, uh, older and older and did it all the time, you know, he couldn't keep them in. They were way out of here. They got stretched out. They lost their ability to, to stay where they're supposed to. Yeah. Same thing can happen to the heart. And then of course the function, uh, is reduced, but also, um, perfusing the kidneys. If you've got too much pressure, Again, I don't mean to give you a physiology no, lesson, good, but uh, the problem is also you worry about your kidneys. Mm -hmm. um, over the long haul, um, you know, or, or think of it as like using a fire hose through a filter. You're going to damage that filter. You know, if you did it just temporarily during a workout, you're not going to stress it out. But if you're constantly uh, blowing that much tension through your filter, you're going to damage your filter just like you're going to damage, you know, your vasculature and your heart. So it's chronic hypertension that you want to worry about and um, again it's a another analogy is when I see people come in and their HDL is buried at like 10 and you know my first question is well you know how long have you been using Winstrol yeah uh, because Winstrol will cut your HDL in half in you know three days Wow. Um, well it's not pathological we have a reason for it yeah and I will you know 
ask them to consider getting off the windstraw. And within months, doesn't happen right away, the HDL will come back to normal levels. So again, if they're doing something in, you know, by medical standards is in excess, mm. uh, and then they get off and the blood pressure returns to normal, then we know that it's not pathological. That's good. It's just because of something we're doing. So let's compensate for it. Mm -hmm. Cialis would be a good way to compensate for it. So will a, a very well-absorbed magnesium, magnesium glycinate, magnesium glucin, uh, uh, gluconate, threonate, uh, something not like magnesium oxide or magnesium sulfate, uh, like in milk of magnesia, that'll make you just draw water into the bowels. And, and how many milligrams of magnesium would you recommend? It's almost impossible to overdose uh, orally. Good question, thank you, uh, because people worry about taking too much of it. Um, when I was working in family practice, uh, we would give six grams of magnesium intravenously every 15 minutes to try and reduce uterine contractions wow. in a pregnant female. So, I mean, that's the equivalent of, say, 60 grams ingested. Wow. Excuse me, every 15 minutes. So you don't have to worry. I recommend typically about two grams with dinner. Make sure it's with okay. dinner so you don't upset your stomach. Okay. And when you're typically winding down at night, okay, and see if that doesn't help. And Good. two grams for uh, you know an, uh, somebody your size, okay. maybe a gram for you know someone 130 to 150. Everyone's different, yeah. But that's a great one, and, and it can only help you. I mean, you remember the Krebs cycle, or we call it the citric acid cycle now. Mm -hmm. uh, you to convert food into usable energy, you need magnesium also. Mm -hmm. So uh, not just the B vitamins and uh, zinc and CoQ10. So it's a different element. Uh, than calcium and potassium, and it's not just an electrolyte. I mean, we, we have to, we, we need it for the uh, for that conversion. You can burn through it, um, uh, well, like you can burn through potassium and calcium too, but uh, it's not just to keep your muscles supple and your vasculature relaxed. It's to con help you convert food and usable energy. So you want to make sure your magnesium levels are not just in the reference interval of normal, by the way. I try and get all my athletes to to, you know, the reference interval is what, 1.6 to 2.6 roughly, uh, depending on what, what lab you're looking at. I try and keep uh, everyone above 2.2. Nice. Uh, yeah, just because it's, again, optimum, not normal. Who cares about it? <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Doc.